Hello my soccer universe! Match day 2 of the Champions League in the new format was very much a double-edged sword. We had on Tuesday a microcosm of what we saw on match day 1. A couple of interesting games with expected results if you would like. And then a bunch of blowout wins where only one really stood out which was Brest 4-0 at Salzburg because that's something no one really expected. How on Wednesday we got maybe less goals but what we got were some really interesting results and in some cases I would even call them upsets. I mean we had Bayern Munich, we had Real Madrid losing with Atletico Madrid being flattened by Benfica and also we had this crazy game in Leipzig, not to mention the crazy game that we had in Girona. But yeah, before I want to draw any more conclusions from these games, let's just review the past two match days in longer edits of the short videos that I've already published. Milan also lose their second game in the Champions League, kind of expected, this time 1-0 away from home to Bayer Leverkusen. And I would have said after 60 minutes or so, yeah, the result is fair, Leverkusen totally deserved their win. But it changed then after the 60th minute where I thought that a draw would have not been entirely undeserved. However, we have to say, first half it was all Leverkusen, they created a chance, they had an offset goal called off correctly saw how the linesman didn't see that is a little bit beyond me. It was a goal by Boniface. Milan had a very late chance through Pulisic and that was not even really a chance and it was a beautiful passing play by Leverkusen where two players were offside however Frimpong was not. He was nicely sent, placed it over to Boniface. From a short distance he taps it in. It's 1-0 for Leverkusen and I feared the worst at that point. However then Morata comes on and the whole complexion of the game changed. There was a huge chance for Riders who was free on goal and for some reason tries to play past a invisible opponent. Cannot get his shot off. Then there was a chance where a throw-in is not controlled by Radetzky. Morata almost got to that. Then of course a big chance where Teo Hernandez takes a shot that's deflected onto the crossbar and then Morata on the rebound doesn't get it in. Yes, there was another big chance for Leverkusen in there as well. And yes, probably Leverkusen should have put the game away earlier. However, I feel that Milan would have deserved a draw and even more annoying, very late on, on the edge of the box, there was a clear foul. And it was not given, it was not even looked at that VAR. And that really annoyed me then, towards the end. In any case, I expected two opening losses. Now Milan need to get points on the board in the next game. In the standard fixture of the evening, Arsenal got a relatively easy 2-0 win over PSG. While there was good quality on both sides on display, it was Arsenal had a whole lot more penetration going forward. I don't know what PSG were thinking. They had possession for possession's sake. Tosar cross in, Havertz completely towering over everyone at PSG. Makes it 1-0 in the 20th minute. And then again, a dead ball situation where a Saka free kick goes through everyone into the net. I'm not sure if it really got a deflection. I don't think so. So the goal is given to Saka. It's 2-0 Arsenal at the half. Yes, PSG showed a little bit more in the second half, but overall this was a relatively easy win for Arsenal. To me a sleeper tie was the duel between the Dutch and the Portuguese champions that ended in a 1-1 draw between PSV and Sporting. PSV very much on the front foot early on scouting with a screamer opens the scoring. There were a few really good chances, a beautiful action that De Jong then puts wide. That would have been goal of the season, I would say. And so it comes as it always comes in these cases that PSV cannot put the game away. Sporting actually had a huge chance to equalize and Braganza runs free on goal and just falls over without getting a shot off. However, he makes good on that after the Araujo cross. He scores and equalizes in the 84th minute and Sporting were even pushing for the win. It's the first time the Sporting draw points this season. And we also had a 1-1 draw between Stuttgart and Sparta Praha on Stuttgart's return to the Champions League, at least the home return. Mio in the seventh minute heads it in from a short distance. What was wrong with the backside of the Stuttgart jerseys? I guess UEFA reg regulations. However, Sparta were well in the game and scored a beautiful equalizer through Karin. A free kick that Nübel just could get his fingers on, but it was way too well placed. Second half, it was more or less Sparta keeping up tight, defending everything away and Stuttgart's few chances didn't not go in. So I would say for Stuttgart this was a little bit of a disappointing draw. The Champions League evening on Tuesday also featured tons of lopsided results. So let's go by the order of magnitude. I want to start with Brest who go to Salzburg, win their 4-0. Yes, yeah, Salzburg were for 60 minutes maybe the more proactive team, but they were toothless in attack, had a goal disallowed for an offside by Baidu. And then on the first counter-attack, Ajok shakes off his opponents, sent Sima 
one nil for Brest, very efficient. And then also more or less with a second shot on goal, Camara in the 66th minute makes it 2 nil, And then it got ugly because Salzburg completely fell, fell apart. A uh, Blaswig error allowed Sima to add his second goal. And then Lars just a few minutes later makes it 4 nil. The public in Salzburg really getting on their team as well. This is not what Salzburg are expecting. Absolute mad result, but bravo Brest. Your first two European games, two wins against two Austrian opponents. Inter, meanwhile, had little trouble in with a changed lineup against Javena Zvezda. Jalanoglu opening a scoring with a beautiful free kick. Yes, it takes a slight deflection, but what a great strike. Javena Zvezda actually were level in the game in the first half, but the second half, Taremi plays it over to Anatovic. 2 0 for Inter, and that settles the game. Later on, Taremi also assists Lotaro and converts a penalty, so he was the man of the evening, getting his first goal for Inter in the process. City also expectedly got an easy win at Slovan Bratislava on their home day in the Champions League. Gundogan opens the scoring or in the 8th minute. Foden a few minutes later makes it 2 and then it was easier. Haaland is sent by Lewis onto goal. Goes around the goalie 3-0 and McAtee a 4th goal. Very, very easy uncomplicated win for City. I guess all the saving players by Flick over the weekend paid off because Barca got a 5-0 home win against the force that is Young Boys Burn. I'm of course very sarcastic. This was easy for Barca. Young Boys were not up to snuff. Lewandowski opens scoring early. Rafinha adds a second one and Inigo Martinez after a nice Pedri cross makes it three before the half. Lewandowski gets another goal and then it's also Camara on goal in there. This was smooth sailing as well and I don't know why Flick needed to change his lineup on the weekend. I think he could won with his young boys against the young boys. However, the biggest goal and probably the most entertaining first half came in Dortmund, where Dortmund beat Celtic 7-1 with Karim Adeyemi, the tragic hero, if you would like. Can opens the scoring with a penalty. However, Maeda very quickly gets an equalizer that is then answered by Adeyemi with his first goal. Yes, they took a very wicked deflection. Adeyemi then with a rock in the 29th minute, his third, Girasi with another penalty. And then again, Adeyemi the first half, 5-1 at the half. Celtic completely falling apart after the big opening day win. Second half, Adeyemi with a hamstring injury had to come off. That was not the exit that he would deserve from the game. Girasi adds a sixth and then Mecha a seventh. It's not the 9-2 from Bayern, but German teams run riot in the Champions League early on. On Wednesday, we may have seen less goals, but it was a whole lot more exciting because there are many more tight games and we got quite a few upsets, four of which we'll talk about right now. The big game was Aston Villa against Bayern Munich, the replay of the 1982 to European Cup final. This time it was played at Villa Park and while Bayern controlled most of the proceedings, saved Musiala, Aston Villa always kept compact and were the more dangerous team. There was a Pau Torres goal called off for offside. Bayern of course created chances but you know can never could get Harry Kane well into play. Second half a little bit more even though Musiala came on and then Bayern is called out on a counter-attack in the 79th minute and Pau Torres plays it forward. A long ball and Duran who had just come on for Oli Watkins sees it now as a little bit out of his goal and from far out lobs it more or less into the net. Brilliant goal. Yes, Harry Kane had a great chance that was saved by Emi Martinez. There were a few more other saves in there as well, but Villa overall deserved that win. Another huge upset came in Lille, where Lille beat Real Madrid 1-0. A Real Madrid side that tried to press high, but Lille through Shegrova played right through it. Had a lot of intensity. The winning goal then came when a free kick was really defended badly by Kamavinga. Touched it with his hand. Jonathan David with a penalty. Scores and then very late on, the Chevalier had to make Make a few great saves. There was one on Adagüe. There was one on Bellingham. But overall, it was very lackluster from Real Madrid. Mbappé, when he came on, showed nothing. It may not have been the most shocking result, but it was definitely the most eye-catching one. Benfica 4, Atletico Madrid 0. Atletico didn't have a shot on goal. This was all Benfica. They should have led by higher score and then just a 1-0 already at the half. Ecto Coglu getting the goal. Yes, Lino hit the crossbar, but that was the only chance for Atleti. And then it becomes a proper score in the second half. It was penalty that's given away. Di Maria slots it home. Then Bayern in the 75th makes it 3 and then there's another penalty. Kirk 2-4. Benfica looking very good after a rocky start to the season. I will 
argue the best game of the Champions League evening, at least of the late games, was Juve's 3-2 win at Leipzig. What a crazy game. And it did not go well for Juve all along and still they pulled out the win. The first had two injuries where Bremer and Nico Gonzalez had to come off. Gatti and Francisco Concesao coming on. Then Sheshko gives Leipzig the lead with an absolute worldly of a goal. The way he takes the ball down his left foot and slams it under the crossbar with his right. Brilliant stuff. However, Juve come out very well from the halftime break. Hit the post. Vlahovic gets an equalizer and then again luck turns against them because Di Gregorio comes out and touches barely the ball with his hand. However, Di Gregorio is sent off. Quick, a few changes there. It's a free kick taken and Douglas Lewis who had just come on tries to protect his face with his hand, the ball goes, of course, there. It's a penalty. Sheshko converts and you think now Leipzig are gonna roll over Juve. No, Juve does not give up. Vlaovic gets an equalizer, so both of the superstar strikers are on. Then I think Openda hits the post for Leipzig as well. And then later on, Francisco Concesao just tries to kill time, goes into the box, wiggles through a few defenders and scores the winning goal. Famous win for Juve. Maybe with some negative repercussions though. We had another really great game in the early kickoffs when Feyenoord beat Girona away from home 3-2 in what is probably the smallest ever Champions League stadium. Less than 10,000 allowed into the ground. This game had everything. Five goals, two penalty saves, two own goals, disallowed goals. Maybe a red card was missing in there. Start out with Diego Lopez giving Girona in the 19th minute the lead. However, an Herrera Ongol just four minutes later levels the score. Ten minutes later, Milambo is sent by Peixao and converts nicely for the lead for Feyenoord. Then penalty for Feyenoord. Ueda's penalty is rather poor. He's saved by Gazaniga. Second half. Giron come out pushing for the equalizer. Goal is disallowed for offside. Then they have the big chance. A penalty is given for them. Miofsky's penalty though is saved by Wellenreuter. But then finally in the 73rd minute Van de Beek gets the equalizer. But just when Girona seemingly had the momentum it is Krejci who puts in a Hanschko cross for an own goal. It looked like it was Gazaniga's fault. No, it was a really unfortunate Unlucky on goal. Atalanta, meanwhile, had no trouble with Schachter in Gelsenkirchen. Jim City, Lukman, and Bella Nova settled the game for them. This was one way traffic. There was hardly anything coming from Schachter. Over at Anfield, Liverpool get a 2 0 win over Bologna. Goals by McAllister and a beauty in the 75th minute by Mohamed Salah. Uh, one also has to say that Bologna were well in the game and actually scored a goal that was called for an offset just before the 1 0 by McAllister. They also hit the crossbar. On the other side, Liverpool overall the better team so I think the result is fair just might have mentioned that Bologna really fought well. In the pouring rain of Zagreb on a barely legitimate pitch Dinamo Zagreb and Monaco play out a 2-2 draw with Zagreb actually having a 2-0 lead through Sucic and Baturina halfway through the second half. However Saliso heads it in after a goalkeeping error from Dinamo Zagreb and very late on is a Zakaria penalty that salvaged the draw from Monaco who were overall a little bit more mature team. And lastly you cannot deny Sturmgrasse they put in a lot of effort however Bruges were better in almost everything that they were doing. Bruges get a really beautiful winner through Zolis in the 23rd minute. There was not really a chance coming from Sturm Graz. Again, trying to play. Played also away from home in Klagenfurt, which caused some protests by the Sturm fans. But when you look at all the statistics, the game overall, I say Sturm put in the effort. Great. However, Bruges is just a level above and get a deserved win. So as we're still getting used to this new format, for me one thing is clear. We will see more lopsided results because goal difference could come into the play. We will look at it when we're in the standings because goal difference is one of the tie breakers. However, we also saw that big teams that have already won the first game, like a Bayern Munich, like a Real Madrid, are saving already their stars because they know, you know, Maybe we'll get the wins later on because we don't need to necessarily go all the way top of the table. Top eight is enough. And maybe we can afford losing a game or dropping points here or there. I still think that neither Bayern nor Real Madrid wanted to lose their games on Wednesday. But they saw this is maybe a way of giving our players a little bit of a rest. It's also interesting to look at the results more on a country by country basis. I mean, all the Premier League teams were winning and there were some pretty big results in there. I mean, Aston Villa over Bayern, of course, sticks out, but also Arsenal over PSG, Liverpool, Man City were a little bit more expected. We had the Germans really romping through the competition last time. Around this time, they had a really good Tuesday with a big win for Dortmund, with a big win for Leverkusen. Yeah, Stuttgart's draw was maybe not that great. But then the Wednesday with Leipzig and Bayern Munich losing, not that great. France 
got two wins, the two most outstanding wins, if you would like. However, PSG and Monaco, the two top teams, actually let the league down. Serie A teams also did over quite well, but then you had Bologna losing to Liverpool. Yeah, expected. I would also argue that Milan losing to Leverkusen was also in a way expected. And then there's the curious case of La Liga, where Barcelona expectedly, again, win against the young boys, but yesterday it was a total salto nulo by the Madrid teams. Zero goals, five conceded in total, but also Girona losing at home to Feyenoord did not look well. Portuguese teams, both Lisbon teams, getting actually quite good results, but not. Two wins, and lastly, yeah, the Austrian teams, especially Salzburg, major disappointment. Sturm Graz, I think I'm okay with their results. They're missing lots of important players, but I think it is unfortunately what one could expect in such a tough Champions League. Admittedly, it's still hard to read the overall standings, but after two games, we know already a little bit more. Again, we will look at the overall standings here. On the very right, there's a bar that shows you the overall difference that the results of this match they made. So you see, for instance, the big positive bar for Brest, who sit in second place right behind Dortmund on the strength of their big win. We also have Benfica up there, Leverkusen, Liverpool, Villa and Juve. Those are the teams that got two wins out of two. Then City, Inter, I think those are two really strong teams. They drew on the first match day, of course. And then you see a couple others that are standing down. It looks really, really weird that we have Bayern at 15, Barcelona at 16, Real Madrid at 17, PSG at 18. Yes, it's only two match days and this can of course happen in a league like that. Towards the bottom, we see already some really small teams, but we also see for instance Milan there, we see Leipzig there. Those teams definitely have to make a big turnaround if they want to progress and potentially even get seeded. I'm looking there especially at Milan. However, I still feel it's better to look at the expected standings because they kind of project forward for the other six games as well and we see that City will rise to the top and Leverkusen, Liverpool, Dortmund, Arsenal really look well. As to Arsenal, Juve, of course, I mean, six points out of six, Real Madrid, that loss will not hurt that much. However, Real Madrid used to be in second place, now you're only in eighth in the Bayern. Similar stories. When I look at my team's Milan, oh, you barely scrape in, a turnaround needs to happen. I mean, the goal for this Champions League is definitely something around nine points to just qualify, and you need a whole lot more to go probably deeper in this competition. Again, we're just feeling ourselves into this competition. However, when we look at the overall favorites, while the league table has changed, this has not changed very much. City ahead of Real Madrid, Arsenal, Liverpool, Bayern, Barcelona. There's only a few minor changes because we do have the knockout format. And I think once the tree is set, that will tell us a teeny bit more. Now let's look also ahead to the next match day. Quite a few interesting games there. I mean, Milan against Club Bruges is probably not a big match, but it's a huge match for Milan. They need to get that win. I'm, of course, looking at Real Madrid against Dortmund. Real Madrid on a bounce back win. PSG against PSV. Yeah, this could be an interesting one as well. This is French against Dutch champions. And I want to see what Stuttgart do against Juventus. And maybe Girona can get their first win against Slovan. However, it's on Wednesday where we have a true treat. Barcelona against Bayern Munich. Hansi Flick taking on his old team. That is really, really exciting. And then Brest against Leverkusen. Can Brest, after beating both Austrian teams, also get points off a German team? Lille face another Madrid team. This time they have to go to Atleti. Can it do another miracle there? And then we have also the small matter of Leipzig against Liverpool. Maybe a little bit overlooked by me at the moment, but you know. There are some connections between those two teams there as well. Any case, let me know what you thought about the Champions League round. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. I'll talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye! Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day! Bye!